Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay, and Palmolive Shave Creams for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave bring you Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, her salary as a teacher covers all her basic expenses, but Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, has discovered that there are certain luxuries it won't pay for. Luxuries like clothing, for instance. <laughs> However, last Monday, I dropped into Madame Amelia's dress shop to price some of the items she was featuring in a post-Easter sale. In no time at all, I discovered that if Madame Amelia would let me pay for it on time, I could easily afford the sales tax on her cheapest dress. <laughs> but thanks to a proposition Madame made to me, I did leave the store with four new dresses. At breakfast Friday morning, my landlady commented on one of them. Another day, another dress. It's a beauty, Connie. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. You've no idea what it's been like to sit opposite you during this past week. Every day a new dress that looks like the first breath of spring. Glad you like them, Mrs. <laughs> Davis. But I wish you'd cheer up a little. Your dress looks like the first breath of spring, and your face looks like the last gasp of winter. <laughs> What's the trouble, Connie? Well, you know the agreement I have with Madame Amelia, don't you? Why, yes. She said she'd give you a brand new suit free of charge if you'd introduce some of her clothes into Madison High School this week. I wasn't only supposed to introduce them, Mrs. Davis. There was also supposed to be an increase in business. Well, since you've been wearing the dresses, hasn't business increased? 25% at Dewberry's across the street. <laughs> That's ridiculous. The jump at Dewberry's is just a coincidence. You deserve the dress anyhow. Look at the work you've done. How many other teachers would want to wear a brand new dress to school every day? I don't know. How many teachers are there in the United States? <laughs> no, I'm afraid I haven't lived up to my part of the bargain. As a matter of fact, our agreement officially terminated last night. I was supposed to return the dresses then. But you're wearing one of them this morning. I just couldn't face my old blue jersey suit for at least one more day. Besides, I figured after all this time, somebody's bound to notice me. You mean no one's paid any attention to your new outfit so far? Well, I did get some encouragement yesterday. I'd been sitting opposite Mr. Boynton at lunch for three days in a row, and each day I had a new dress on. Yesterday, he finally noticed something different about me. What did he say? He said, Miss Brooks, you've got some eraser dust on your neck. <laughs> The female members of the faculty admired the dresses, but they're evidently too poor to do any buying. How about your principal, Connie? Did he comment on the transformation? Mr. Conklin hasn't commented on anything but his newest economy drive. Another one? But he just ordered a big cutback in school expenses last month. That came from the Board of Education. This is his own idea. And you ought to see him enforce it. Why, I broke a pointer the other day while he was in my classroom... And before it even hit the floor, he had snatched up the short piece and filed down the rough edge. <laughs> and what did he do with it? He gave it to a teacher with long arms. <laughs> oh, he's a beauty, all right. <laughs> That's Walter Denton. Be right there, Walter. <laughs> I've got to run, Mrs. Davis. Thanks for breakfast. You're welcome, dear. And don't look so discouraged about the deal with Madame Amelia. You've still got today to put it over. I'll try. Just remember this, Connie. Whether it's modeling or anything else, you only get out of something what you put into it. Believe me, Mrs. Davis, everything I've got I've put into this dress. <laughs> Please, Walter, keep your eyes on the road. What in the world are you staring at, anyway? Just the most scintillating vision in the world. <laughs> huh? I wish I didn't have to drive at all. I wish I could just sit here and drink you in and all your intoxicating loveliness. <laughs> well, hand me a mirror. I'd like to get high, too. <laughs> Honestly, Walter, this flattery is overwhelming. Oh, it's only your due, Miss Brooks. Gosh, I've always admired you personally, but the way you've looked this last week makes the way you used to look positively hag-like. I should have quit when I was ahead. The dress you've got on today's a knockout, Miss Brooks. 
What are those colors in it? They're chartreuse and cerise, Walter. They are? Of course, those are the fancy names. Actually, these colors are nothing but good old, down-to-earth, plain and simple puce and magenta. <laughs> well, whatever they are, the way you've been dressing the last few days has had eyes popping all over the school. That's funny. I haven't heard a thing. <laughs> are you kidding? Why, half the female members of the faculty look like Eddie Cantor. Of course, I'll admit it took everybody a few days to start noticing your new wardrobe. But I think I have the answer for that. Oh? What is it? Well, it's because everyone has seen you in that blue jersey suit of yours for such a long time. It got so that after a while, nobody ever looked below your face. <laughs> Don't you think that hits it right on the nose? It sure does. Got a Kleenex? <laughs> oh, I am glad that somebody's finally noticing these outfits. I wouldn't be human if I wasn't. Oh, don't you worry about that. You're human, all right. Thanks for the affidavit. <laughs> Harriet told me you got the outfits at Madame Amelia's. Uh-huh. I told my mother about them last night, and she said she must be a wonderful dressmaker. Oh, she is? Yeah, my mother said she wants to visit the place herself, but she was wondering when would be a good time. What is she doing yesterday? I mean, <laughs> any time is all right, I guess. Oh, before I forget, Miss Brooks, uh, when I spoke to Harriet on the phone this morning, she said to tell you to please stop at her dad's office as soon as you get to school. Uh-oh. It's probably in connection with this new economy drive of his. I extravagantly requisitioned a new eraser last week. Isn't this drive a pain? He's even cutting down on our athletic equipment. Here we got a big track meet coming up, and he won't provide any high hurdles for the guys to practice on. All we got is the old low hurdles. Well, that isn't an insurmountable problem, Walter. What do you mean? All you have to do is put up the low hurdles and let the boys run on their knees. <laughs> Who is it, and is your business urgent? It's Miss Brooks, and it can wait indefinitely. Bye. Not so fast. Come in, Miss Brooks. Now then, I'll come right to the point. The reason I wanted to... Miss Brooks, isn't that another new dress you have on? Yes, sir. Really remarkable. Miss Brooks, may I ask you a question? Certainly, sir. Are you able to dress this way on your salary, or have you come into an inheritance? No, sir. No, sir what? No, sir, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> I mean, I haven't come into an inheritance. But these new clothes, how do you pay for them? Well, you see, sir, You it's don't really... gamble, do you? <laughs> oh, no, sir. Well, I don't want to pry into your personal life. After all, you've worn that blue jersey job long enough. <laughs> Suffice it to say that in the past week, you've given the rest of the faculty something to shoot at. The dresses can't be that bad. <laughs> now, on the contrary, they're very smart. But to get back to the reason for your being here, as you know, Miss Brooks, I am in the midst of a new economy drive here at Madison. Oh, I know, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Boynton and I discussed it thoroughly at lunch yesterday. Oh, then you're beginning to feel the pinch. Certainly not. All we ever do is talk. <laughs> oh, yes, sir. I'm afraid everyone's feeling the pinch. Well, believe me, it's a necessary measure in these parlous times. Mr. Stone, the head of the school board, is coming over to my home this afternoon for tea. Naturally, I'm interested in impressing him with the strides we've made at Madison. Naturally. And it has occurred to me that an excellent way to convince him of the wisdom of my economy policy is to show him what a teacher such as yourself can do on a limited budget. Me? Yes, Miss Brooks. If you'd come to our home this afternoon, my wife and I would be most pleased to see you. In one of your new dresses, that is... Well, that's very nice, Mr. Conklin, oh, but I... Oh, and since it's a bit late for her to pick up anything, uh, would you consider lending Mrs. Conklin one of your other new creations? Just for the day, of course. Well, Mr. Conklin, I it's like this. I don't want you this. to think that this is a command performance, Miss Brooks, but you will be there at four, won't you? <laughs> yes, sire. Sir. Excuse me. Principal's office. Who? Oh, she's in my office right now. It's for you, Miss Brooks. Be brief, please. Yes, sir. Hello? Who is this? Madam who? Oh, yes, I know. Last night was the last... 
Yes, but I just have them back today. But I... Very well. As quickly as possible. Goodbye. Well, if you'll excuse me, sir, I'd better be getting into class. Nothing wrong, is there? Wrong? Or what could be wrong? I just don't want to be late. You know how hungry my pupils are for learning. Starved is the word. <laughs> well, you'll be at my house at four sharp, Miss Brooks. Is that correct? Mr. Conklin, I'll be there with bells on, if nothing else. <laughs> Brush your teeth with Colgate, Colgate Dental Cream, it cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What cleans your teeth? Colgate toothpaste. Cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What cleans your teeth? Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Yes, the Colgate way is the most thoroughly proved and accepted home method of oral hygiene known today. Over two years' research showed brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. The Colgate way stopped tooth decay best. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, offers such conclusive proof. And you should know that Colgate's, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research on tooth decay recently reported in Reader's Digest. So always follow the Colgate way to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and stop tooth decay best. Brush your teeth with Colgate's Colgate Dental Cream. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. What it cleans your teeth. And the Colgate way stops tooth decay best. Well, by lunchtime, I had almost decided to confess to Mr. Conklin that I didn't really own any of the Madame Amelia dresses. But before making that decision, I thought I'd discuss it with Mr. Boynton. When I arrived at the school cafeteria, I purchased my lunch and had just sat down to a table when who should come walking by but Mr. Boynton himself. Naturally, he stopped immediately. <laughs> Sorry, Miss Brooks, I, I didn't see your foot there in the aisle. Oh, forgive me, Mr. Boynton. I didn't mean to trip you so hard. I hope your lunch isn't all wasted. Oh, no, Miss Brooks. Luckily, my salad landed right side up. and My hamburger landed on my salad. Oh, well, here's a napkin. You landed on your jello. Thanks. Let me help you pick up your dishes. Gosh, that was a strawberry jello I sat in. Does it look terribly messy, Miss Brooks? No, not at all, Mr. Boynton. In fact, it's rather attractive. I bet when you walk down the school steps, you'll look just like a sunset. <laughs> but, Mr. Boynton, there's something I'd like to ask you. Oh, oh before you do, Miss Brooks, I'd like to pop a question to you first. Of course, it, it might be considered quite personal, but with your permission, I'll pop it anyway. If you're going to pop the question, I've been waiting for you to pop. Pop away, Pop. <laughs> Miss Brooks, that dress you've got on, isn't that another new one? Why, Mr. Boynton, you've been paying attention after all. Do you like it? Oh, very much. It's a very interesting shade. Uh, yellow, isn't it? Just where the butter landed when you dropped your tray. <laughs> it's mostly chartreuse, Mr. Boynton. Well, it's very exciting. Almost identical in shade to the skin of a young frog. <laughs> this is the third or fourth lovely new dress you've put on this week. How do you do it, Miss Brooks? I just drop them over my head and pull up the zipper. <laughs> of course, I... I was very fond of your blue jersey suit, too. It held a sort of sentimental attraction for me. You know, that's the suit you were wearing when we met. Yes, four years ago. Well, I, I must admit, I wasn't too crazy about it at first, but, well, it, it really grew on me. Me, too. <laughs> I had quite a time chiseling it off last Monday. But about those new dresses, Mr. Boynton, Ms. I'd like Brooks, to... The fact that you were able to acquire such garments on a teacher's salary is extremely commendable. Well, thank you, Mr. Boynton, but... Now, I've always admired a woman who can budget herself properly. A woman who can do that could be a real asset to a man. She could? Well, a man could hunt for such a woman for, for years and years. 
Four of them, to be exact. <laughs> With a clever and thrifty companion, there's no telling how far a man could go. Go, go. <laughs> I mean, continue, Mr. Boynton. Well, to, to sum up my feelings in the matter, I, I can only say that this type of woman is downright marriage timber. Timber! <laughs> now, I, I'm serious, Miss Brooks. Seeing you in these new outfits has, has opened my eyes and... There's something I'd like to say to you. Pardon me, Miss Brooks, but I've got to talk to you for a minute. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Walter, what is it? <laughs> I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Just my future. What can I do for you? Well, there's a delivery truck outside for Madame Amelia's dress shop. The driver says you've got four dresses to send back. To send back? Yes, it's just a temporary measure, Mr. Boynton. You mean the dresses are all going to be altered, Miss Brooks? No, Walter, like I said before, just my future. <laughs> Miss Brooks, heading for Daddy's office? Yes, I am, Harriet. I just left him. I've never seen Daddy in such excellent humor, Miss Brooks. He's sure that your new gowns will make a big impression on Mr. Stone this afternoon. In fact, he said that your little visit this morning was like a tonic to him. Wait till he hears the Mickey I've got for him now. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid I won't be able to come to tea this afternoon. Won't be able to come? But why not, Miss Brooks? And where's the gorgeous Madame Amelia dress you had on this morning? In a delivery truck on Main Street. But I don't understand. You're wearing your old blue jersey again. Where did you get that? Out of a bundle I had ready for the Salvation Army. <laughs> it's a long and gruesome story, Harriet, but I had to send the dresses back. You see, I never really owned them. I was just modeling them for Madame Amelia. If business increased, she said she would give me a free one, but it didn't, so she didn't, and I'm back where I started last week. Shall we dance? <laughs> well, don't look so desperate, Miss Brooks. All isn't lost. Then where is it? You're going to love me for this. I was so captivated by those new gowns of yours that during your English class, I secretly sketched two of them. Then I took the patterns to home economics class, and we spent the past couple of days making exact copies. What? I know you promised to lend one to Mother, so it'll work out just perfectly. Of course, we made them out of airsats material, but beggars can't be choosers. And after all, the main thing is not to disappoint Daddy. But don't you think your father and Mr. Stone will notice the difference? Of course not, Miss Brooks. When it comes to dresses, women have been pulling the wool over men's eyes for years. Well, Miss Brooks, what do you think of my idea? To tell the truth, Harriet, it's not bad. <laughs> I'm glad we got home ahead of Daddy, Miss Brooks. It gave me a chance to reinforce some of the weak places in this dress. Now, stand still while I pin this basting in back. Where are the pins I ask you to hold? I've got them in my mouth, Harriet. Help yourself. Your mouth? Why, well, that's no place to put pins. Ouch! Neither is that. <laughs> Sorry. We've got to hurry, though. I heard Daddy and Mr. Stone go into the living room about five minutes ago. I must admit you copied the style of Madame Amelia's dress perfectly, Harriet. But tell me, what kind of material did you use? Well, we started with rayon, and when we ran out, we used muslin. Some of it feels like cheesecloth to me. <laughs> oh, it's loaded with cheesecloth. But don't worry, Miss Brooks. The way I've got it basted, no one can possibly tell the difference. I'll bet your mother will tell the difference when she puts hers on. Well, frankly, Miss Brooks, I haven't had a chance to tell her it's a copy. I just left it on her bed when she was getting the tea ready and then rushed back here to you. What? You mean to tell me your mother doesn't know there's nothing between her and a life of shame but some cheesecloth and a fervent prayer? <laughs> Gee, I never thought of it that way. If mother bends over or sits down too quickly, we're sunk. We're sunk? Your mother won't be in such good shape either. <laughs> You both got to be very careful. I tell you what I'll do, Miss Brooks. If I see anything beginning to go, I'll give you a verbal signal. A verbal signal? Yes. Since we'll be having tea, I'll just say something like sugar and cream, Miss Brooks, or pass the lemon. Now, come on. Everybody's waiting for your personal appearance. With the wrong kind of a break, this can be the most personal appearance I've ever made. <laughs> But mind not to reason why. Lead on, Harriet. Right in here, Miss Brooks. Well, here we are, Daddy. So you are. You know my daughter Harriet, Mr. Stone. Certainly. Hello, Harriet. How do you do, sir? 
And Miss Brooks. Well, that is an attractive dress you have on. Thank you, Mr. Stone. I've been telling Mr. Stone about the wardrobe you've acquired recently, Miss Brooks. It certainly gives impetus to an economy drive when a teacher can do what she's done, eh, Mr. Stone? Very impressive, Conklin. And thanks to the way I manage my personal budget, Mrs. Conklin has been able to enhance her wardrobe recently. She's probably jumping into her new duds right now. I don't advise it. <laughs> oh, I see she's left the tea right here on this table. May I act as temporary hostess? Uh, please do. I'd love some tea, Miss Brooks. Uh, sugar and cream, pl please. So soon? <laughs> I'll pour it for you, Miss Brooks. You stand still. Well, hello, everyone. Hello, Mrs. Conklin. Happy to see you again. Say, that's a stunning dress you have on. Yes, you look positively ravishing, my dear. Stand just as you are. Don't move a muscle. Yes, hold it for about 45 minutes. <laughs> I don't believe I've ever seen you looking lovelier, Martha. You and that gown are a match that was made in heaven. Oh, now, Osgood. Honestly, Mr. Stone, sometimes when Osgood pays me a compliment, he gets so extravagant with his praise, I could just split. <laughs> You're holding the wrong thought, Mrs. Scott. <laughs> and may I pour you some tea? Oh, thank you, dear, but I can pour it myself. Bending over is good for me. Oh, but you mustn't bend, Mother. Here, I'll get you a cup. Oh, I'd rather do it myself, Harriet. After all, the more one bends over, the more one takes off around one's middle. <laughs> But, Mrs. Conklin, one can take too much of one's middle. After all, it's nice to have something between one's bottom and one's top. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, but uh, why are we standing? Let's sit down, shall we? Very well. Oh, wait. Hmm? It's not healthy to sit down after a heavy meal. Heavy meal? But none of us has had anything to eat since lunchtime. I know, but why take chances? <laughs> <laughs> you and your quips, Miss Brooks. <clears throat> now, let's all be seated. Just a moment. What is it now? I propose a standing toast to our host and hostess. Hear, hear! A toast to our host and hostess. <laughs> now, can we sit down? Uh, would anyone like to hear some music? Oh, that's a great idea, Harriet. Get out your phonograph record of John Philip Sousa playing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> now, stop the horse play, you two. Sit down, Mr. Stone. Now, just where were we in our discussion, sir? Mm, you were pointing out to me, Osgood, what a teacher could do on her present salary if she really tried. Ah, uh, exactly, exactly. And not only a teacher, but anyone who lives on a budget. Take that dress my wife is wearing. Oh, now, let's not talk about me anymore, Osgood. Well, why not, my dear? Blushing becomes you. Oh, well, I'm just a little warm. I think I'll open a window in here. It's not that warm in here. Perhaps not, but I thought I'd like to let in a little more air. Uh, uh, please, Martha, just sit down. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? That was Mrs. Conklin letting some more air in. <laughs> Like something ripping. Is that your dress, Mrs. Conklin? Oh, certainly not. It's still the same lovely three-piece suit it's always been. <laughs> three-piece suit? Martha, stand up a minute. Yes, Osgood. What did I tell you? It's the same lovely four-piece suit it's always been. <laughs> With two pair of skirts. Gracious, this, this dress is coming apart at the seams. But I, I don't understand it. Neither do I, but I'd better get into my bedroom and change. Excuse me, please. Miss Brooks, perhaps you can explain what's going on here. Uh, not now, Mr. Conklin. I'd better go in and help Mrs. Conklin change. I'm sure she can manage by herself. Now sit down, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Sugar and cream, Miss Brooks. Get your own sugar and cream, Harriet. <laughs> Miss Brooks, sit down. <laughs> what's going on here? much, Mr. Stone, but an awful lot is coming off. <laughs> I think I'd better pour myself a cup of tea. Oh, the lemon, Miss Brooks. Where's the lemon? It went that way. <laughs> Uncle, I think I'm beginning to see what this is all about. I beg your pardon? First, you give me all this talk about retrenching. Then you demonstrate that what a teacher can buy on her salary these days is actually nothing but junk. I've got to give you credit, Conklin. Your idea is brilliant. 
It is? <laughs> Certainly. You've given me a graphic display that too much economy can't possibly work in these days of rising prices. Osgood Conklin, you're really clever. Oh, come now. <laughs> After all, my wife and Miss Brooks were of considerable assistance, you know. Yes, indeed, you, you and Martha would make a fine pair of actresses, Miss Brooks. Well, thank you, Mr. Conklin. I know one theater in town that would love to have us. <laughs> oh, which one is that, Miss Brooks? The Star and Garter Burlesque. <laughs> Brooks returns in just a moment. Now, the case of the close scrape featuring Arthur Griffin, mail carrier. Here's what Mr. Griffin told us. Listen. Here's exactly what happened. Shaving was just one close scrape after another for me, and then I discovered palm olive lather shave cream and a new, different way to shave. Palm olive's oceans of rich, thick lather ended my worries about scrapes, burns, and nicks. Why, even in cold or hard water, that palm olive lather way is super smooth, super comfortable. Take Arthur Griffin's advice, men. The new palm olive lather way gets beards really soft, and it provides a protective film that actually floats your razor's cutting edge. You get a clean, close shave every time without worry about scraping or nicking, even in cold or hard water. Arthur Griffin and 1,200 other men tested palm olive lather cream following package directions, and three out of four reported smoother, more comfortable shaves the palm olive shave cream way. No matter how they shaved before, better get palm olive lather shave cream. Remember, even in cold or hard water, the palm olive lather way means smoother, more comfortable shaves. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, there wasn't much sense in sitting around in my drafty dress, so I said goodbye and backed out of the Conklin's. When I arrived home, Mrs. Davis was most helpful and had just finished sewing me up when the phone rang. Hello? Oh, hello, Miss Brooks. This is Mr. Boynton. I've been thinking of how lovely you looked in your new dress today, and I wondered if you'd like to take a little walk this evening. Oh, you, you took me by surprise, Mr. Boynton. I'm afraid I dropped the receiver. Hold on a moment. I'll pick it up. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Boynton, but I can't see you tonight. But why not? It's a beautiful night. The moon is out. The stars are out. If this wasn't a party line, would I give you an answer? <laughs> this is Burns Smith. We're running to tune in next week to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Pomelo Shave Cream for a smoother, more comfortable way to shave and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis and Arthur Allsberg with the music of Wilbur Hatch. Listen to this. With Marvellous Vell, V-E-L, you can save 90% of dishwashing work. A quick soak in Vell suds gets dishes and glassware shiny clean. Even if a bit of food should cling, a touch with a dishcloth gets rid of it fast. Yes, Vell's activated suds lift off and carry away food and grease. So all dishes need is a quick rinse, and they dry sparkling without washing or wiping. All pots and pans need is a soaking with Vell suds. Then you can wash them shiny clean without hard scouring. What's more, Vell is a miracle of mildness. So get new Vell. Save 90% of dishwashing work. If you like mysteries that are as full of chuckles as chills, be sure to hear Mr. and Mrs. North every Tuesday over this same network. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. Stay tuned now for Jack Benny. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>